Moving to now that the Vampire Diaries is finished, yeah. what are you going to miss most about working on that show? Oh, it's just my friends. Mm-hmm. Just the friends, uh, uh, just the camaraderie, just the... Uh, it's just the spirit of having gone through all the trials and tribulations together. Uh, you know, you're forged in a special bond when you go through that kind of experience, and it, it will be hard to recreate moving forward. Yeah. I think on any, any project. What's been the most revolutionary thing you learned whilst working on that show? Oh, great question. The most revolutionary thing that I learned working on the show, I think it's just um, adaptability. Mm-hmm. You just have to adapt. You, you always have a new director for each episode. Everything's changing. The schedule's always changing. Uh, and so you just have to be adaptable. You know, and, and how, do you, how, do you, how can you maintain uh, your artistic point of view, mm-hmm. your, your own integrity, while having to adapt to all these other points of view that go into shaping, shaping a show? I guess working in TV is you know, structurally different than mm-hmm. working in film where you tend yeah. to work with just the one director and you yeah. know, a very set crew of yeah. production people whereas you know, with TV you do have that yeah. know, rotation of yeah. people coming through. So yeah, I think adaptability is great. Yeah. Um, so there was a video that I saw of you discussing this alien rock prank oh, no. that happened to you. <laughs> yeah. um, and you were talking about this really mysterious phone call that you got. Did you yeah. ever find out who, who that was? I did. Okay. I did. I did. It was a friend of mine. And uh, yeah. that prank caused more problems than, than we realized. But for the longest time, who, whoever was on the other line was the biggest mystery. And then years later, my friend who pulled the prank came out to visit me and had confessed to me that I was her. And like all my friends, she had no idea the sort of drama it had caused amongst <laughs> all of us as a cast when she like confessed to, to it. So she thought it was going to get like a big laugh from everybody when she told everyone that it was So she, her. Wasn't, she wasn't in with anybody else, like in a no, crew or anything no. like that. No, no. The she problem was, was I thought it was Candace the whole time. But I had convinced myself that Candace was pulling the prank. I was like going crazy because I couldn't figure out who it was. And poor sweet Candace, God bless her, had to put up with me accusing her of being this the vampire pranker for the longest time to the point where she was like, sort of like wilting over it and I feel horrible looking back on it now now knowing it was my asshole friend who pulled the prank and confessed confessed to, to Candace she's like I, I'm the pranker and Candace was like you're the <laughs> so it was, uh, it was did, did she forgive you though did Candace forgive you once she found out that it wasn't you know. yes <laughs> yes okay. yes yes cool. Candace has been very gracious about that um Now, when it comes to the supernatural and other sort of phenomena like that, you confess to be a bit of a believer. Yeah. So, I guess, what's your favourite supernatural creature or mythological creature? I mean, I've always been intrigued by the vampire mythology. Uh, So, I... I, Bram Stoker's Dracula, especially the the film version, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's film version of (laughs) of Dracula is hands down my favourite. And I just love the idea of... uh, living against the grain, you know, living by night, living eternally, and, and what all of that could mean for a vampire. So I think the, the, the mystique of the vampire uh, mythology speaks to me the most in terms of monster, yeah. supernatural monster stuff. Um, and, and do you think that was kind of also part of the reason why you jumped into working in the Vampire Diaries? Was that something that you kind of went, I'm really into vampires, so I reckon I'd like to work on this show? I, you know, I, I'd always loved the vampire mythology. Like I said, uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker mm-hmm. was my favorite film of the in the mythology, and next to Lost Boys, and so I I'd always had an affinity for it, but I didn't really consciously enter into uh, the Vampire Diaries thinking like, oh, this is great that I will now contribute to the the vampire mythology mm-hmm. with this show for eight okay. seasons. When I came on, I was just going to be a guest star, uh, and had no idea. So I was just I was just happy to be a part of what. The pilot was, which looked really. They showed me the pilot when they made me the offer. It just looked so cool, and it was like a really great cast and really great writing. And I just was excited to be a part of a good show. Uh, but it didn't really occur to me that I was about to embark on a on a show that would, you know, leave its mark on the vampire mythology. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you know, so that wasn't something that sort of crossed your mind. It was just no, a case of not that. consciously. Like, no. It's a job. Cool. Awesome. I get to work on the show. Yeah. That looks really cool. I guess it sounds kind of basic. <laughs> and, but, yeah. and then it was like afterwards that you kind of realized, oh yeah, now I'm actually part of this. I'm yeah. Part of this mythology. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Okay, too. Have you got any other forthcoming projects that you've got coming up that you wanted to talk? My about? project right now is just 
getting my bearings, you know, <laughs> moving back to Los Angeles with my fiance and just sort of figuring out what's the next right step. You know, there's lots of opportunities, but trying to find the right opportunity and the right step after coming off of the Vampire Diaries is an, uh, an important sort of transition. Mm-hmm. I don't want to jump into anything or rush anything right now. Yeah. So I mean, I guess you've been working on this show for like the better part of sort of four years, five years, so. Eight years. Oh, eight years, Seven, okay, eight there years. you go. Yeah, so, yeah. so, you know, you don't really want to sort of go jumping into anything too rash. Yeah, no, I mean, there was that sense, like, when the show ended, like, rush, like, pilot season, get onto a show, yeah. just move forward, keep moving. But uh, now that the, the sort of anxiety of all of that's behind me, I think really right now it's just getting back in touch with my own voice, figuring out where I'm at, getting my bearings. You know, you play a character with the same people for eight seasons, and then all of a sudden it's over. You're just kind of, you have a bit of a, a bit of a, an identity crisis. <laughs> You're like, what, what am I, what's going on here? Um, you know, so I'm just settling home, uh, being with my family, figuring out what it is I want to do next, and, and make the right move next. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time thank today. You. Yeah, and thank you. um looking forward to seeing you over the weekend at Oz Comic Con City. Be fun. And hopefully you'll be able to come back and visit us again soon. I look forward to it. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.